Ready? Okay, if we could get everyone to. Okay, we'll call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Aldermen for Monday, January 22nd, 2019. If everyone would please uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance in a silent prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Just note that Mike Dalton is still recovering from his um, heel surgery. He is recovering quicker than they thought he would, but he's still going to be out of the office for a couple more weeks. So hopefully he'll be with us the next meeting, if not the meeting after that. So with that, we will um, I'll call the roll. Alderman Bernelli? Here. Alderman Cavallo? Here. Alderman Cotto? Here. Alderman Di Giovanni Carlo? Here. Alderman Dorso? Here. Alderman Giacomi? Here. Alderman Kula? Here. Alderman Lopez? Here. Alderman Matthews? Present. Alderman Martinez McCarthy? Here. Alderman Napoli? Alderman Nujame? Present. Alderman Sherman? Here. Alderman Weaver? Here. And I am here. So with that, uh, we have a quorum. And I would just note for the record that Alderman Napoli is going to try to make it down, but he's involved with a uh, uh, reception with the governor for the uh, new members of the House. So he's, he's going to try to make it down, but it looks like we'll be quick tonight, so I don't know if he'll do it. With that, we'll go uh, right into public speaking. Anyone who wishes to address the board, please sign up with the city sheriff. Please state your name and address for the record. There's a five minute limit and I'll give you a one minute heads up. Mr. Sheriff. First speaker tonight from 1400 Meriden Road, Martin Spring. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Martin Spring, 1400 Meriden Road. I know I only have five minutes, Mr. President, so I'll have to be brief. Um, I just saw this in the paper uh, the other day, and it said residents flee in city, and uh, data shows population growth linked to jobs and investments. You know, I have a lot of friends of mine and, uh, that want to come to the city, move to the city, and buy homes here. And the reason why they're not going to buy a home here is because the mill rate. I know I spoke about this before, and I'm not saying this to be disrespectful to the administration or any member of the Board of Aldermen be it Republican or Democrat. But the thing is, we have the second highest mill rate in the state of Connecticut out of 169,000 municipalities. The highest right now is Brid uh, Hartford. Waterbury is the second highest, and Bridgeport's third. And the lowest is Greenwich, Connecticut. I, I just don't understand for the life of me why we can't get this mill rate lowered. I think that would be a great incentive, if you will, to have people want to come here to buy homes, build businesses. I know we do what we can to get businesses in Waterbury, but the bottom line with the mill rate being so high, it's almost nearly impossible to want people to come here to buy homes or stay here. And maybe we could create some kind of incentive, the members of the Board of Aldermen, to have more police and fire to want to move here, firemen and policemen, if you will. I think if we had a lower mill rate, I think that would be probably something that we could look at in the near future that we create a great incentive for them to want to be here. Because look at this way, if I'm a police officer, live in the city of Waterbury, or I live out of town, whatever, or a fireman, I'm going to want to move to Waterbury because, you know, the market's good. We all know that. The homes are good. You know, it's pretty safe Waterbury, even though I know statistics say we have some issues with uh, things going on within the city. But you have people that would love to move here and, and buy a home here. I had a lot of friends of mine that moved out of Waterbury and moved down south for whatever reason, and a lot of them are veterans too. They fought in the war in Vietnam, what else? And uh, you know, the, the thing is it'd be nice to get some, uh, some kind of initiative, if you will, to have people to uh, move here. It would be awful nice. And um, there's something else I wanted to read. I probably don't have a lot of time, but it says on the other, the other paper over here is the Sunday Republican American, January 20th, Violent crime sinks 13%. Gang-related crimes still dog city. Uh, we had uh, talk about murder, rape, robbery, aggravated assault, burglary, larceny, all of that. And the reason why I bring that up because the other day, you know, I was saying to the missus, 
What is all the police doing now? We just moved. We just sold a house, as you know, Paul. We sold a house in July. We moved to 1400 Meriden Road. It's a condominium complex, and it was cops all over the place. And guess what? They were looking for these individuals. I don't want to mention their name. And Mike probably already knows about it. I was going to call him up and talk to him about it. And being all of them in my district, in my district, and the other gentlemen who are all of them in my district. And they said, I found out that they had stolen a vehicle and they parked it right down the street from our house. And they had a nine millimeter gun in there. You know, I mean, these are kids. These are young people. What are they doing? I mean, is it the breakdown in the families or what is it? You know, they shouldn't be having things like that. So, they had to go out and tell the missus, they had to go out and tow away this poor people's car that was stolen and left it there. They called the uh, flatbed, because I think it was an all-wheel drive uh, SUV. And the bottom line is I felt so very sorry for these people, they probably needed this vehicle to go back and forth to work. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, think about it. I lived in Waterbury all my life, and I've never seen so many things happening and i'm not it's just society itself it's like these kids they have no respect one minute Mr. i understand and i was talking at the last waterville community club meeting we have to build a juvenile detention center in the city whatever somewhere there will be scenario well i don't want it in my backyard well i'm sorry you know you got to do what you got to do to get things cleared up and rectified because you can't have these kids running around i don't care what color race creed they are Okay, I don't care what the circumstances are at home. The bottom line is you got to do something to get things right, and you got to put these kids, you know, in the, I think in other states, I, I know they got boot camps for these kids, and that's for juvenile detention centers to do something. So, you know, again, I know I'm going to go, but I just want to say that I want the members of the Board of Alden to know that Martin Spring really cares about his city, and I want you guys, Republican and Democrats, come together for the betterment of all the citizens and work really hard. And I do appreciate all you people that come to the Waterville Community Club, especially you, Paul, and Mike, and Ron. And, and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Next speaker from 112 Concord Street, Thomas Pelletier. Thomas Pelletier, 112 Concord Street. Uh, items number seven and eight on your agendas tonight. I would ask that you pass uh, in regards to Career Academy with the uh, apprenticeships uh, with these two fine Waterbury companies. Uh, this, this program at Career Academy has done wonders uh, for the children that are in these apprenticeships. I happen to have a nephew who was at Career as a freshman who will soon hopefully be able to be in some of these apprenticeships. I know freshman year they take all their courses. So this is just another proven example of what we've been trying to do in uh, working with these companies to, you know, when people come up and say that uh, Waterbury's not doing enough uh, for the unemployment rate, this is just the prime example of what we're doing and most of these kids that get into these apprenticeships, about 95%, I've been told, have been hired on the spot after graduation. So I think that this would be a no-brainer. Item number 11 on your agenda, I believe, should be a no-brainer. Uh, we are coming into the cold period uh, of winter. Uh, as of last night, you saw an uh, example uh, of the situations that we have this time of the year. We did have a fire on Willow Street. Uh, thankfully, uh, nobody was killed. There was only two injuries from last report. Uh, and I gotta give kudos to uh, Chief Martin and the entire Waterbury Fire Department uh, on how, um, you know, They've been able to, uh, in such cold conditions, uh, you know, they've done a superb job at what they're trained to do under these conditions. And I gotta give them a lot of kudos last night. I also have to give kudos to uh, our public works and our education employees um, that were out uh, all weekend. 
uh, trying to get the city back in order. I know that uh, there are going to be some people that are saying that, uh, you know, the conditions are horrible, but we did everything that we could, and we are still doing everything that we can. Uh, Mother Nature did not work with us this weekend as fast as we plowed and uh, we snowblowed. Things froze on contact. Um, we're continuing to do the best we can, but you know, at the end of the day, I think that most of the citizens of the city uh, know the job that uh, these magnificent people do on a daily basis, and I got to give kudos to uh, the mayor's aide uh, just coming on. You know, some people uh, gave him uh, credit getting his feet wet, but I got to tell you, for the last few weeks that I've gone to the mayor's office uh, for my weekly briefings, he's it's definitely um, got on this job without having to do any training, so I got to give him a lot of credit. And um, at the end of the day, I just want to congratulate you guys once again, and uh, I know that we're going to have tough decisions down the line with the budget uh, as it comes down from Hartford, but uh, I want to give you guys kudos too, so keep up the good work. That's the last speaker, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, with that, the um, next item on the agenda um, would be to approve the minutes for the meeting of Monday, January 7th, 2019. Is there a motion with respect to the minutes? Motion approved the minutes of the regular meeting of Monday, January 7th, 2019. So moved. Second. Made by Alderman Bernelli, seconded by Alderman Lopez. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. Um, the minutes are approved. With, uh, before we go into committees, you should have on your desk uh, an appointment to the Board of Police Commissioners. It's to be added as new business item number 12. Um, is there a motion to add that to the agenda? Motion to add item number 12 uh, to intergovernmental. Second. Motion having been made by Alderman Bernelli and second by Alderman Lopez. Is there any discussion? Yes, Alderman. I'm um, just looking for clarification. Is the R a typo next to Paul Cicchetti's name? I don't know. <laughs> does, does anybody notice, is Paul, uh, it says on this thing that Paul's an R, but I think that that may just be a typo. Does anybody know? <laughs> okay. Um, what's that? Yeah, yeah, but there's another problem if that's the case. So, um, let's add this item to the agenda. Let me see before we vote on it if I can get clarification for that. If not, we'll have to find out. So, uh, so the motion right now is just to add this to the agenda. Is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. It's added to the agenda. Um, with that, we'll recess into committees. Let's start with finance, and I'll see if I can find the answer to this question here. Thank you. I call the uh, Finance Committee meeting to order. Item 2, your Finance Committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve a refund request from Vivint Solar Developer LLC in the amount of $540 for a canceled electrical permit, PR 201-8000-1923 for 151 Frost Road as submitted by E. Gill Graveline, uh, Building Official, Department of Inspections. Motion to approve item number two. Second. I have motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item three, your finance committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve a refund request from Mike Mazamuro of Trinity Solar in the amount of $1,035 for a canceled electrical permit, PR 201 for 14 Fieldwood Road, as submitted by 
E. Gill Graveline, Building Official, Department of Inspections. Motion to approve item number three. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item four, your finance committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve a request from Vivint Solar Developer LLC in the amount of $697.50 for a canceled electrical permit, PR 201-8000-2091 for 60 Newport Drive as submitted by E. Gill Graveline, Building Official, Department of Inspections. Motion to approve item number four. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. <laughs> Item 10, your finance committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve the purchase and sale agreement to sell 74 and 88 Linden Street vacant lots to Mutual Housing Association of South Central Connecticut, DBA, Neighborhood New Horizons, as submitted by Michael LeBlanc, Director of Finance. Motion to approve item number 10. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing no discussion, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Old business item number one. Uh, for old business item number one, can I entertain a motion to receive and place the item on file? Motion to receive and place on file. We have a motion to receive old business item, uh, receive and place on file old business item number one. Um, a discussion? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Standing, your finance committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve and authorize the Director of Finance to make refunds to taxpayers representing overpayments of tax bills in the amount of $8,520.81 submitted by Frank A. Caruso, Jr., Revenue Collection Manager. Motion to approve. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all, those in, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Can I entertain a motion to adjourn? We did. Okay. We did. I just want to clarify. Old business item one. What about new business 12? That, that was the. I'm sorry. I'm ahead of myself. I'm sorry. No problem. It's okay. We are adjourned. I'd like to call into order the Intergovernmental Committee meeting scheduled for January 22nd, 2019. First item on the agenda, item number five. Your Intergovernmental Committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approves an appointment of the following individual to the Board 
of Assessment Appeals as submitted by Neil M. O'Leary, Mayor, City of Waterbury, and the name is Luis Quinche. The term commencing January 22nd, 2019 until December 31st, 2022. Alderman Dorsal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I make a motion not to disapprove. Item five is read. Second. I have a motion which has been seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda, item number six. Your intergovernmental committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approves a recommended change to the salary range for audit director. The Finance Audit Review Commission, FARC, recommends that the salary range for this three-year contract position to be changed from starting at 70, no, from 75,000 to 90,000 per year to 85,000 to 100,000 per year. Revision was approved by the Commission of Civil Service on December 18, 2018, and submitted by Scott Morgan, Director of Human Resources. Alderman Dorso. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I recommend a motion to approve item six as read. Second. I have a motion to approve item number six, which has been seconded. Any discussion? All the women, Caro. Good evening. Uh, I'm here uh, representing uh, Scott Morgan tonight, who was unable to attend. Good evening. Uh, and we also have uh, Paul Bazzelli from the uh, FARC Commission uh, to address any questions that you may have as well. Yes. Um, the first question is, you submitted the draft for the, the job description, but you are not asking for us to approve that draft. Is that correct? That's correct. Second, um, I would like to know if it's possible what criteria were the ones that FARC used to recommend this um, salary range. I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Yes, um, the recommendations were made by FARC. Mm -hmm. What criteria did uh, FARC use to submit these recommendations, to approve these recommendations? Paul, did you want to address that? <laughs> My name is Paul Bazzelli. I'm chairman of the Finance and Audit Review Commission. Hi. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, we had uh, asked uh, Human Resource Director Scott Morgan to put together a salary survey for audit directors in the state of Connecticut. Uh, it went from a high of uh, almost 129,000 for audit director in Hartford, uh, 124,000 in Stanford, I think, for assistant director. Uh, so the commissioners were very interested in wanting to get, because we changed the job description as well, to beef that up where we definitely are looking for a certified public accountant. Uh, who has that kind of uh, certification, i.e. a master's uh, degree, et cetera, because we are moving along uh, in the finance area with the city, and we want that expertise uh, to continue uh, to see the, to really acknowledge the good work Mike and his team have, have done, and uh, to offer any kind of help that we can, and the auditor can, to correct any problems that may still exist out there that we haven't gotten to. It would be, thank you for that explanation, and it would be very helpful if in the future you could add that to the package so that we can um, use that as a reference to make our decision. Okay, I will. Thank if we, hopefully, we're gonna get an auditor with this salary range that we're hoping someone's gonna stay longer. The, our last audit director was here for four or five years. I've gone, I've been on this commission since the early 2000s, and uh, we've had, I believe, three or four audit uh, directors in this city. And we lost one who went to be the controller at Water because the salary was higher. 
So uh, we lost an audit director there. So we're very hopeful that by this increase that you hopefully will approve this evening mm -hmm. uh, and the new job description that really beefs up the requirements for the uh, audit director that uh, uh, hopefully we're going to continue to do the good work for the city of uh, Waterbury. Thank you. Alderman Matthews. Quick question for the rep from FARC. Um, with the pay rate, the, the, the difference in the pay rate, how are you guys going to do your steps? So we're going to start at 85, or we're going to offer 85, or we're going to offer something closer to 100,000 to entice somebody to come in? All right. <laughs> and then what will be the steps after to get to the 100,000? I appreciate the question. Yes. I'm a manager with Wells Fargo Bank, and that's always a, uh, an issue, obviously, is where you start someone. Yes. Uh, and that's the whole reason why we raised it, because the previous uh, audit director, she topped out at 90, uh, and that was for five or six years that she was here. Uh, and we started her off at, uh, I believe, $85,000 when she came on board, and she, she was loaded with a lot of credentials as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I'd like to do is maybe start at maybe 80% uh, of the, uh, uh, the midpoint of that range, okay. Uh, and see how fort lucky we are uh, to see if somebody grabs that so we have some room for uh, increases in, in salary. Okay. All right, thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, I will hold items number seven. Yeah, yeah, just, I just want to make sure that I go in order. Yeah. Number eight. Hold. And item number nine. Next item on the agenda, item number 11. Your intergovernmental committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approves and accepts the award of an assistance to firefighters grant for smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. The total program cost is $54,400. The federal share is 51810 which equals to a 95.2%. The 4.8 match required of the City of Waterbury is 2,590, as submitted by David Martin, Chief of Fire Department. Alderman Dorso. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I recommend we approve item 11 as read. Second. I have a motion to approve item number 11, which has been seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Mr. President, were you able to get a definite update on item number 12? Paul and I got a text from Angela at the clerk's office indicating that he is a Democrat. So uh, I, that's a it is a typo. They are on the on the sheet. Um, and with that, just to m make it clear, uh, Paul, who had been at one point the aldermanic liaison, will become a member of the board, not as an aldermanic liaison. And Alderman Dorso, who's been on as a non-alderman, will become the aldermanic liaison. So in effect, we're swapping out the two the two positions, and that'll be the result of this tonight. So okay. Excellent, thank you. So item number 12, your intergovernmental committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approves the appointment of Paul 
B. Chicati, D. To the Board of Police Commissioners with the term commencing on January 8th, 2018 and expiring on December 31st, 2021. Alderman Dorso. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I make a motion not to disapprove. Item 12 is read. Second. I have a motion to approve item number 12, which has been seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? We are adjourned. Okay, with that, we'll return to the regular order of business. The following items are on the consent calendar. Item number one is receiving place on file. Item number two is on consent to approve a refund in the amount of $540 to Vivint Solar. Item three is on consent to approve a refund in the amount of $1,035 for Trinity Solar. Item number four is on consent to approve a refund in the amount of $697.50 to Vivint Solar Development. Item number five is on consent not to disapprove the appointment of Louis Quiche to the Board of Assessment Appeals. Item six is on consent to approve a change in the salary range from the audit director uh, from 75,000 to 90,000 a year to the new range of 85,000 to $100,000 per year. Items seven, eight, and nine are held in committee. Item 10 is on consent to approve a purchase and sale agreement to sell 74 and 88 Linden Street to Mutual Housing Association of South Central Connecticut doing business as Neighborhood New Horizons. Item 11 is on consent to approve the award of an assistance to firefighters grant for the smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. Total cost of $54,400, a $2,590 city match against the $51,810 uh, federal share. Item number 12 is on consent not to disapprove the appointment of Paul V. Giacchetti to the Board of Police Commissioners. And item number one, old business, is on consent to receive and place on file. Is there a motion with respect to the consent calendar? Motion to approve the consent calendar is read. Second. Made by Alderman Brunelli and seconded by Alderman Lopez. Are there any additions or deletions to the consent calendar? Hearing none, then all those in favor of approving the consent calendar as read signified by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. The consent calendar is approved. With that, is there anything else? Oh, uh, standing. standing committees. Alderman DiGio Van Carlo. Thank you, Mr. President. Your finance committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve and authorize the Director of Finance to make refunds to taxpayers representing overpayments of tax bills in the amount of $8,520.81. Submitted by Frank A. Caruso, Revenue Collection Manager. Motion to approve. Second. Motion having been made by Alderman Martinez McCarthy and seconded by Alderman Kula. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. The refunds are approved. With that, is there anything for the good of the order? Alderman DiGio Giovan Carlo. Yeah, so, Mr. President, I just want to comment on an article that was in the uh, Waterbury Republican on January 17th. Waterbury rescinds tax bills against landlords. So on top of the out-of-state play problem and the tax dodgers, we now have landlords and tenants that seem to be getting away with uh, paying their tax bills also. So I, I know Attorney Whibby's here, and uh, I would like, I, would, I myself, I don't know if any other alderman would like it, or alderwoman, uh, a list of the real estate taxpayers in this city as far as single-family homes and multis and the and also the car taxes that are attached to those properties because I, I believe there's a, a, a serious problem with uh, those paying car taxes versus the good taxpayers that are. So I'd like to hopefully get that list and I don't know what attorney would be if there's anything we could do on our end if a, if a household is not paying taxes, is there any other way to go after them? I don't know if you can answer it now or later. I just it's, there's four cars here, one's a BMW worth God knows what, and, and no one's paying taxes on it. So I just... You know, you know uh, what, we can, we can, uh, why don't we do this? Let's, let's request the list of the taxes. We can do that. I don't want to go too far down. Right, yeah. It's not an item on the agenda okay. without adding it. Um, 
I don't want to have too much discussion on it, but we could start by, I, I will reach out to the, um, the assessor's office and see if we can get the listing of, of the, you want all the real property? No, just whatever would be paying car tax. I mean, we do, we, you know, even if you want to say the business is yes, I guess, because there's a definite place I know with three New Jersey plates on it daily. So, I mean, it's, it's whatever, I want, any kind of starting point we'd like to start at. If you want to just do households and multis, I want to show that there's a serious uh, problem with, with us collecting our car taxes in the right. city. All right, so. let's, we'll talk about it, but we'll make the request, and then when those items come in, we'll have an item on the agenda, and then we can have a discussion and potentially take some action, okay? Okay, All thank right. you. Any okay, no problem. I just, I'm not so much the lawsuit. I think it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing problem. It's a bigger problem than we think. That's all. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Hearing none, Alderman Bernelli. Motion to adjourn. Second. Made by Alderman Bernelli. Second by Alderman Lopez. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Have a safe <clears throat>